welcome to Standard 2E. In this presentation, we will cite major technological and scientific exchanges in the Eastern Hemisphere around 1500. Our essential understanding for this standard uh, is to recognize that around 1500, the world wasn't isolated from each other. That uh, the empires and states of Europe had contact with the empires and states of Africa, the Middle East, Asia, uh, and that technological and scientific advancements had been exchanged among the cultures of the world. Things that had developed in one part of the world didn't stay there. Just the same as today, uh, a piece of technology might develop in one part of the world and within 10 years it's pretty much found everywhere. Uh, same thing was true in, in the 1500s, uh, maybe a little bit slower than today, but still a lot of contact and a lot of trade between these empires and states. Our essential question, uh, what technological and scientific advancements had been made in exchange by 1500 AD? We kind of have a shopping list of things that we need to know, which is why uh, I've gone back in time here to 1500 and shopped to two of the most popular stores of the time, being uh, China and India and the Middle East. So we're going to take a look at some of the products, uh, technological and scientific, that you could get from China and India uh, around 1500 AD. Okay, from our China store, we had a number of things we could get from China. These were things that developed in China, and at this point in time, China was about the most technologically advanced place on Earth. For example, paper. Okay, paper developed in China, so paper uh, bought and sold in Europe oftentimes came from China. Uh, the compass. I do have a compass somewhere, but uh, not the iPhone, but the actual real compass uh, was developed in China. Made its way across the Silk Roads to Europe and obviously was very important for the explorers like Columbus and Magellan who we're going to get to uh, in a few classes. Without the compass, their voyages across the Atlantic would have been much more difficult, if not impossible. Went out and got a few ties, and when I look at the labels here, I don't really wear ties that often, uh, it says 100% silk. Okay, this tie, no joke, it's actually from Thailand, but uh, the, the silk that was used to make it quite possibly came from China, so we want to know silk and China. And then our last one is, is called porcelain. Uh, and you might have a set of dishes like this at home, quite possibly with uh, some nice blue around the edges. Uh, quite likely in your house it's called the fine china. And that's because it actually is. These are the, uh, the fine china my wife and I got for our wedding. Okay, and we can actually see there. Actually, this was made in Japan, but it actually says fine bone china. Uh, and that's actually what porcelain is. Okay, uh, still has a price tag on it. We, we really don't use these very much. Okay, so those were things that we could get from China. Paper, compass, silk, and porcelain. Let's take a look at what we got from our India store. Okay, from India and the Middle East, uh, things like textiles, and I use as an example a shirt, uh, Europeans in the 1500s were still largely wearing clothes made from various animal products. If you were in Europe in 1500, quite likely, especially if you were poor, you would be wearing something made of wool. Okay, or something else from animals, but uh, if you've ever worn a wool sweater, you know those can get quite itchy and in the summertime can get quite hot and sweaty. Uh, so textiles were developed in India and parts of the Middle East out of plants. Textiles would be things like cotton, and cotton being a product from a plant uh, breeds a lot easier, it's a more comfortable fabric to wear. Uh, and once Europeans got a hold of it back in Europe, they understandably wanted textile clothing 
and, and less and less demand for things like wool. And then the other thing, I was trying to think how to uh, demonstrate number system. I, I steal a book here from my, my son, my first number book. But if you think about the numbers that we use, we, we actually call them today Arabic numerals. Okay, so from the Middle East, our number system, Arabic, okay, from the Arab world. Um, the, the concept of zero, uh, and from a mathematical perspective, the idea that nothing is actually a number. Uh, that concept in being able to hold the spaces for tens and hundreds and thousands, uh, that concept of zero comes out of India and Hindu mathematicians. So our number system that we use today is largely a product of India and the Middle East. And I'm going to put my shopping bags away here, and uh, that's it for Standard 2E.